don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our new podcast, Our Therapy for Nerds. Welcome to Behind the Mini Allure video. Hi, Andy. Hi, Nikki. How are you today? Oh, a little bit coldish, but other than that, not too bad. Good, good. Um, this is kind of a new thing for us. We were, we've been thinking about it for a while, and this is just in addition to our battle reports, but we wanted to take a closer look at some of the characters, the new characters that are coming out, and uh, just find out more about them. Right. So if you look at the character cards, they are the the way they translate from the comics into the game is almost genius. Uh, the way that they incorporate special rules based off of things that happened in the comic. And we want to kind of take a look at how the characters themselves relate to the actual lore of them from the comics. Yes, because as you and I have talked about before, it just makes for such a fun game. Yeah. And since the Winter Guard was a surprise, I think, to most people, um, I don't know a whole lot about them. I don't think you knew a whole lot about them. And they seem like a really good starting point uh, to start delving into the lore, specifically with the Red Guardian. Yep, so this week we were talking about Red Guardian. Uh, His real name is Nikolai Kurlinko. And he is the eighth iteration of Red Guardian. And you know what that tells me? It tells me two things, Nikki. First of all, there is no job security as a Red Guardian. <laughs> I mean, if he's the eighth one over the years, I mean, that's only once per every few years you get switched out. Second of all, I have to feel they all suffer from the Batman syndrome. You know, who was the best Red Guardian? You know, are, do people always judge them? Do they have that kind of that timidness and they have to wonder, was I as good as the last one? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, this particular Red Guardian, though, Nikolai, he has mostly been known as Vanguard. Yeah, so that made him really hard to research because when we started looking for him uh, in some of the older comics, we looked for Red Guardian. And that's not really what he's known as. He's known as Vanguard through the majority of the time he's been in comics. Yes. Uh, it wasn't actually until the last few years, uh, it, it was a four part Winter Guard series that he took over the uh, the Red Guardian mantle from the previous one. Yes. Actually, the original one. And that he defeated the original one in that, correct? Right. They were hunting him uh, for reasons. It, I'll let you read the comic. Uh, but they were hunting him, and the two of them got to score off against each other to see who was the better one. Uh, it was really interesting in the comics. Like I said, I'll let the people read that one. But, yeah, he ended up taking it over after that fight. Excellent. So, um, the other interesting thing, he is the twin brother of Darkstar. That is interesting, and they're both mutants. They're both mutants, and I think that leads us to our first point. So, one of the biggest uh, differences between uh, red, this particular Red Guardian and Captain America is that he's a mutant. He's, it's, he's not a super serum soldier. Correct. Um, which I think is pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. So the program he's in, you know, in, uh, the U S and Canada versions of the comic, they had the weapon X program, which technically Captain America was number one. He was the first weapon, uh, series. So weapon alpha roughly, um, in Can or in Russia, they have the Soviet super soldier program, uh, where some of them are given a serum to turn them into supermen. In this case, he and his sister were taken as young children uh, and brought into this program and became superheroes for the Soviet Union, or at that time, Soviet Union. Uh, But again, he was brought in as Vanguard at that time, not as Red Guardian. Um, This is one of the first things you can see reflected on his character card. He's got a special ability called Focused Repulsion Field. And that's uh, a play off of his mutant ability. Uh, his mutant ability, he possesses an energy field that repels virtually all electromagnetic, kinetic, and gravitonic energy. Uh, originally, he could only access his powers by crossing his hammer and sickle weapons 
uh, in front of his body. Uh, whenever they left his side, he was virtually defenseless. Wow, that seems really inconvenient. It really does. Like, where's my sickle and my hammer? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, Thor, he, you know, he has the hammer, but he's got a free hand. Vanguard's got to have both hands yeah. on it. I mean, it, it, it's very clear in the comics there was one in each hand. Uh, and like they say, we've got some great pictures on the screen right now of, you know, him in his earlier iteration where he had to have these. Um, now, eventually, he was able to figure out how to use his powers without the hammer and sickle. You know, but do you, you know, think they have a montage of that? I hope so. I'm gonna do this without my hammer and my sickle. Like, like he's sweating profusely as he's trying to summon <laughs> his powers with his hammer and sickle just like mere meters away or Rocky whatever. Rocky theme in the background. Rocky theme in the background. <laughs> now he he does still use a shield, and that shield does help focus his power. But unlike his previous iteration, he does not need it to actually summon his power. Um, but, you know, th I think that was a big key back, you know, in early comics. They always had to have some major weakness that could be exploited by the writers. Right. Um, you know, the one that always comes to my mind is the Green Lantern. Uh, for the longest time, Green Lantern could not use his powers against the color yellow. Uh, and they explain in the comics why that is, and that's neither here nor there. But that kind of goes to show you they always had these things written in so that there was a way to defeat them easily, if you could do it. And I think the hammer and circle were his, plus yeah. it's very cliched Soviet Union. Yep. Darn, that color yellow gets me every time. <laughs> Never it, can get it that It clashes so just horribly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just because the Green Lantern looked horrible in yellow, and they decided that was going to be it. I mean, to be fair, everybody looks horrible in yellow. This is probably true. So as you mentioned... Uh, he is a mutant, and he does have a twin sister, which is Lanya Petro, Petrovna, Petrovna, I believe, uh, who is Dark Star. Uh, and that actually evidently is pretty big uh, in the actual comic series. She actually worked for the X-Men, or worked with the X-Men for a while, and Xavier ended up getting her killed. Oh, no. So... That's what some of the later uh, comics that are specific to the Winter Guard are about, her coming back. Okay. Um, I don't know if they actually resurrected her or if they brought her back other ways, but she was killed in the comics for a while uh, under I Xavier's watch. I believe that from some of the comics that I was reading through, she had a doppelganger that took her place for a while. Yes. Dark Star and the Winter Guard. And then the Winter Guard. Both the, both those series uh, involve her in that storyline uh, of her coming back in Vanguard. And actually, it's at the end of uh, the Winter Guard. It's a four-part series that Vanguard officially takes on the mantle of Red Guardian after the Android version got its head ripped off of its body. Okay. So, and I guess okay. no one knew it was an Android, or they all seemed very shocked when that happened in the comic. So. Uh, he seems very. Um what's the word protective of his sister he loves yes. his sister very much um and he's a he's a family guy yes um and that's why there have been times it looked like in the comics as i was reading through them he's not so much uh for the russian government as much as the people Correct. So it kind of goes back and forth depending on what's going on. And I think that's important. You know, when we first heard Winter Guard was going to be the new, um, the, one of the new factions, the new squads, you and I both kind of, you know, we, we were looking at what was happening in the world at the time. And we assumed that the this Winter Guard was going to be brought in as a villain, villainous side, you know, like a cabal or criminal syndicate. Yeah, but it's not. It's They're not, not a cabal. It's not a hydra. Um, and yeah, I do not want to get political. On no, this channel, no, but, I, I, I agree. Yeah. They are actually, they've defected to the U.S. in certain comics, but overall they are defenders of the people. Yes. And I think that's the important thing to remember about, uh, this guy and his team. They are doing what they honestly think is best. From most of the comics that I was reading through, he is very, uh, he has honor. Yes. Um, protective of his family, uh, I think I, I saw something where he was definitely working with the Avengers yeah. to save um, a Russian village. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah. So, yeah, very, again, very interesting multi-layered character uh, that after you get done with this, we would recommend you checking out him even more and the rest of the Winter Guard. So, as you mentioned before, he is the actual eighth iteration of Red Guardian. The one we are more familiar with comes from, or I think a lot of people are, comes from the Black Widow movie, which is Alexei Shostakov, who was the original Red Guardian. Mm. Um, and if you look in the comics, he's the one, he's kind of a big bearded version of Captain America in a red costume. Yes, uh, and I did read through that first comic that he showed up in, and he was pretty much a supervillain yes. in, in the beginning. He was. I don't know how his character evolved. I didn't look as much into him since we're not really focused on him right now. But uh, he was definitely, he was after some Captain America. He was definitely uh, portrayed as a villain. Right, and actually in the Winter Guard series, the four-part one, um, he is one of the people being hunted by the Winter Guard. Oh, really? He is no longer considered part of that team. Um, and the uh, Nikolai version is the Red Guardian in that. And he's going after him as well. So uh, interesting. it's very interesting. But in, for the most part, he's Vanguard through the most, again, Nikolai is Vanguard through that uh, comic. It, get, he, it gets very up, confusing. He takes up the mantle after he's kind of, his sister's back, and he's ready to um, be part of the Winter Guard, I guess. Right. And then again, the other thing about Alexei, in the movie, he was the father of uh, Natasha and Yelena. And, and kind of a goofball. And a goofball. I kind of enjoyed his character a lot, actually. In the comics, he's not. He's, yes, he is her husband. He is the original which... husband of Natasha Romanoff. <laughs> oh my gosh. I went back and read the comic that he's introduced in. Uh, it kind of features, like, Hawkeye is going after Natasha. He wants to rescue her. And uh, she's being held by the Red Guardian. Um, and then it come it all comes out in this very dramatic way that he's her husband. Yes, you'll see that on the screen now. It is such a it's, cheesy mustache twirling. <laughs> I'm your husband! I thought you were dead, but and, I'm very much alive! And I guess there's like a little, I don't know, love thing going on between Natasha and Hawkeye at this moment. Yeah. And so she's like trying to explain why she has a husband. I can explain. <laughs> She's like, oh, my darling. It's so funny. It is. Um, so, and again, the way the storyline goes, the Russian government made it look like, or Soviet government made it look like he died. And they told her that, and that was the reason why she joined the Black Widow program uh, and became a Black Widow shortly after uh, to, you know, basically avenge his death. It, it's not like what we see in the MCU or at least one of the original stories was not like that. So yeah, I she, mean, she was married. I mean, how many times you're just going along in life and your dead husband comes back? It's I, just I like, hate it when that happens. It's awful. You know, it's two like, or three. You know. <laughs> one time, yeah. But, <laughs> but what's the chances of twice? Yeah. <laughs> so if you're going to be a Captain America-esque clone, we'll call that, not a rip-off clone, you got to have a shield. Gotta and have he, a shield. he does have a shield. Um, again, if you look at his card, two, his two attacks are based off of a shield, or two of them. you got a shield throw and a, sh a shield smash, although that's not what it's called. You've got your, well, it is called shield throw, but then you've got the Siberian shield smash. Ooh. Still the same thing when it comes down to it. <laughs> but there is a purpose to this in the comics. Um, so he wields a modified vibranium shield that serves as a lens for his powers and intensifies the repulsion of energy. Uh, inside the shield is a high density computer that uses a laser gyroscope to track its flight path from point of origin back to him. He's got a little thing in his uh, his wrist that makes it home back to him. Oh. 
That's convenient. So he is kind of like a lazy version of Captain America or Thor, where he, well, okay, Thor magically it comes back to him. Captain America, that's skill. We've seen the <laughs> montages in the movies. They they've right, got to practice Andy, that boomerang. We know you love Captain America. <laughs> we get it. But for for Nikolai, it's just like he presses a button and it zooms back to him. So that's, that's just lazy <laughs> on his part. He needs to practice like every other Captain America there is. I suppose. So, but so yeah, there is a purpose, and again, it does uh, help to intensify his powers, which is slightly reflected of uh, the way. Uh, his character is built in the game. However, his shield, his sickle, his hammer, they're not the only things that are special about the Red Guardian. <gasps> what else is special? His Red Guardian suit. Ooh. Which, if you look on the uh, the game card, it says uh, when this character is damaged by an enemy or allied effect, after the effect is resolved, if this character is not dazed, it gains a power. They got this from his actual Red Guardian suit in the comics, which uh, it has a mesh lining outfitted with circuitry that allows him to channel the impact force directed at the shield into it in order to bolster his natural powers. So in the comics, if he gets hit or if his shield gets hit, that kinetic energy gets stored in him and he can use that to enhance his already fairly significant uh, mutant powers. In fact, combined with that in, with his natural powers, he has flown in the comics. Oh, yeah. Now, I saw this. Yeah, I mm -hmm. don't think that's his natural uh, ability. Well, I don't think that's his normal form of uh, transportation. He's got a motorcycle because why not? Of course he does. He's got it, but you, it's not called like the so Vanguard mobile. So does he mobile. have flight on his card? He does not have flight on his card. Can he jump really far? No, 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 no. <laughs> but again, missed opportunities. Why didn't they do this? Yeah. I get it's balance. You know, it's, and that's one thing balance, we've always loved about balance, yes. Atomic Mass games. They balance the game very well. But technically, he can fly. So he just uses his little his uh, mutant ability. So yeah, it's kind of his hilarious. Energy. It's so in, if you've ever read the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. They talk about the ability to fly is not the ability to stand in the air or stay in the air. It's the ability to jump up and miss the ground. <laughs> That's kind of how they explained his powers uh, in the wiki and in the, in the comics. His ability allows him to not have to land. That's kind of how they, they worded it very weirdly. He doesn't, his powers allow him to not have to stay on the ground. Really weirdly worded how they did it, but basically it means he can jump in the air and just stay aloft. Yeah, I'm kind of picturing he uses his energy force to kind of push himself. Kind of like Magneto. Yeah. I, I think exactly kind of like Magneto would work. Uh, but yeah, so interesting guy in that sense. All right, so we have a little background. We have how his powers work in relation to the card. Mm -hmm. So any final interesting things, Andy? Well, what I thought was kind of funny, in the comics, he meets Dracula, or Dr Mr. Lord Dracul at one point. He and the Winter Guard, they, they work with him uh, when they're hunting the original Alexei. Uh, I thought that was rather interesting. He, he wasn't hunting him. He was working with him. Or... So is Lord Dracul a comic book character? Yes, he is. Oh, see, I did not know this. Yep, Blade. And uh, is there, here's her name, Elsa Bloodstone. You're okay. going to be seeing her quite a bit come this uh, Halloween season uh, from Disney+. Plus. Uh, she's in the Werewolf by Night uh, or show coming up, and I have a feeling she is going to be quite heavily in the MCU. Um, she is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer type character. Oh, that should be interesting. So yeah, she and he, or she and Blade, are the people who hunt vampires and such. So, but anyways, he met them at one point. Um, you know, the one thing I will say too, what I thought was just kind of humorous. Reading through a lot of the comics, we like I said, we did quite a bit of, of looking through. Red Guardian seems to get his butt kicked in almost every one of them. <laughs> I, it's like really, is he the the punching bag character? None of the other characters got beaten up as badly as he did. Wow. Um, you know, Crimson Dynamo, Ursa Major, 
Dark, well, Darkstar dies, so I guess, at some point. So I guess you can call that worse. But yeah, poor Red Guardian. He just always seemed to... He'd like throw a couple punches, and then the next frame he'd be like all beaten up. And it was just like, come on, really? <laughs> you can do better than that. Poor so, guy. Poor guy. Well, I guess we'll have to see how he plays in the game. Yes. So you will see him in our next uh, battle report. We'll be bringing him with the Winter Guard. Uh, and, you know, we plan to do like things like this more in the future, where characters that we're playing actively that you may not know as much about, uh, we're going to try to bring some insight into why, from a lore perspective, they could be very interesting to play. I think that makes the game more fun. At least for me, I like to know a little bit about the character. It just makes it that much better when I play him. Yeah, I like to know why certain characters have certain powers or can do certain things in the game. And that is almost always because Atomic Mass Games grabbed an aspect from the comics and brought that into game rules wise which i love and that's I love fun. that they do that yeah and that's just yeah, agreed it's so much fun that they do that uh so we will be exploring more uh of these characters down the line and let us know what you would like to know more about yeah if there are certain characters it doesn't matter when they were released as long as they are one of the playable hundred plus playable characters right now uh we'd be more than happy to do some background uh on them uh, I do know quite a bit us, about them. Let us know if you know more about this particular Red Guardian and you'd like to share. Absolutely. Again, until next time, uh, we will see you in our next battle report, and then we'll be bringing a lore video shortly thereafter. Bye. Bye.